What's up guys, my name's Rob, this channel is Decoded, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to add procedural wear and tear to the edges of your materials in Blender. I've filled out a few questions lately talking about the future of this channel and what sort of videos you guys would like to see, and procedural textures was by far the most popular choice. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I have this model that I quickly built for this tutorial of a watering can, and what we're going to do is we're going to add a green paint material and around the edges we're going to have a little bit of the metal material showing through. Okay so first of all we obviously need to make those two materials so I'm just going to go through those quickly. I'm going to add in a principal node. In fact before we start why don't I just hide everything else to speed up viewport performance. So we're going to start with the, the metal material so obviously we need to give it a metallic value and we're going to bring the roughness down. Let's just preview this. That's going to do for our material. We're not going to see much of it. I'm not going to play with it much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate with Shift D this principal node. And now we're going to make the paint material. So I'm going to leave the color for now, but it's not metallic. So we bring the metallic value down. I'm going to leave the roughness where it is, but I am going to give it some clear coat on top. Clear coat, if you don't know, acts kind of like a layer of varnish on top of the roughness of the material. So let's give that about a, a 0.8. Right, what we're also going to do is we're going to give these both some bump value. So I'm going to get a bump node. I'm going to connect it to the normal of both. Let's set the strength down to 0 0.01. I'm going to drive that with a noise node. So we'll get the noise texture going to get the factor, plug it into the height, and that's both of our materials pretty much done. For the noise texture, what I want to do is I want to use a mapping node. Okay, so I'm going to plug the mapping node into the vector, and I'm going to get the texture coordinate, and I'm going to use the object vector, okay? Right, so once we have this, I'm going to move these up actually because I am going to need those later. We need to obviously give this paint can some color. So to do that, I'm going to use a color ramp. We're going to get the color output connected to the base color. And I'm going to change the white value. Let's go with, oh, I don't know, let's go with blue. So we're going to have this nice blue paint can. I'll just zoom in on this so you can see a bit better. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this noise texture that we made for the bump. And I'm going to connect the factor up to the color ramp. And that's just going to add some variation in little parts of like dirt and grime that's built up. Obviously, that's a little bit too much at the moment. So what we're going to do is just grab this blue handle and bring it down. I think I'm going to bring this to somewhere around 0 0.4, 0 0.38. And you can see we've just got a few little spots where we have like black grimy marks. It just adds a little bit of extra realism. So now what we need to do is we need to figure out a way to mix this paint material with this metal material only around the edges. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to use a node called the geometry node. You might have seen this node in some of my tutorials before. I'm pretty sure I've used at least one of them. And if we look at the bottom of the geometry node, it has this output called pointiness. And basically pointiness is just a map that it automatically generates and it changes the color from black to white, depending on how uh, how pointy the verts are. So if you have a very firm edge, like a 90 degree angle, it'll be very pointy. If you have a flat surface, then it won't be pointy at all, obviously. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the color ramp. And we're gonna drop a color ramp in because as it stands at the moment, the pointiness levels, you can kind of see a little bit of a difference but not really so what we're going to do is we're going to get the pointiness and we're going to plug that into the color ramp and we're going to bring the value up of the color ramp until it goes past 0.5 just somewhere slightly past 0.5 where you see it go black like this and now you can see what this node is doing it's making most of the surfaces black but anywhere that it classes as pointy it's giving a lighter value too so we're going to get this white handle I'm going to punch that all the way up to until these are almost touching and you can see a big difference now between the pointy and the not pointy areas. Now what we could obviously do is we could just get a mix node 
we get a mix shader and we could plug in the metal into the mix shader we could plug the paint into the top slot and we could just use this as a factor and that would look okay but the problem is you can see you have paint everywhere apart from around the edge you have like a perfect line if I go down here you'll probably see it better you have just a perfect line all the way around where the paint has rubbed off and you wouldn't say that in real life in real life you would expect some bits of paint would have flaked off some parts would be fine where there wouldn't have wouldn't be any paint come off so what we're going to do is we're going to use a noise texture i'll just grab this noise node that we made earlier move this up and i'm going to get the mapping information and plug that into the vector basically if we look at our map now the metal is only going to show through the white parts right so what we need is we need to break up these white parts to make them look a bit more realistic so we're going to use the noise texture and we're going to duplicate this color ramp we're going to get the factor and plug it into the color ramp and that gives us something like this so then if we can mix this and this together then it should break it up so what we're going to do is we're going to use a mix rgb node and we're going to get this factor and we're going to plug it into the sorry we're going to get the color and plug it into the factor and we're going to get this pointiness color ramp and we're going to plug this into the top slot which will look something like this then what we're going to do is we're going to change the bottom color color 2 we're going to make this black and if we have a look at this as the factor so get the mix node plug that into the factor and take a look at it we can now see that it started to uh, break these up the mode that I like to use better than mix though I like to use darken for this because what that's going to do is it's going to allow a little bit more variation in it and I think it gives you a slightly better look the only other thing that we're going to want to change on this is the numbers on this noise node that we made the one that's driving this map we're going to move the scale up to about 35 I'm going to put the detail all the way up to 16 and I'm going to give it a 0.5 distortion so now if we zoom in on this you can see it's just added some random broken up areas where it's still paint so it isn't it isn't disabled on the whole rim now it's just going to be in random little areas um, so you are going to have to play around with numbers slightly you won't be able to exactly replicate what I've just done here it is going to slightly depend on the mesh but that's the basic idea however it is worth mentioning that this method for whatever reason doesn't work in Eevee right now I think Eevee can't understand the geometry node or at least it can't understand pointiness so I'll show you what I mean if I just have a look at this over in in uh, Eevee it'll take a second to load up but we'll just see what this looks like in Eevee and you can see if we zoom in there is no there's no point in a state or it's all just this blue so it doesn't work in AV but it does work very well in cycles this is a great tip guys I use this point in this data all the time just to add a little bit of extra wear and tear you obviously don't have to do two different materials what you could also do let's say you have just an all metal item you can use the point in this data to make it more rough around the outsides so if you had something like a um, I know like jewelry you might want the jewelry to look like it's a bit worn and scratched around the outsides but to be like kind of okay on the front either way guys I hope you like this video if you did find it helpful please hit the like button and consider subscribing to this channel as well I put up new content every week